Alrighty, we have section uh, 3.7 exercise. Uh, what the heck exercise is this? 18. So, in this, uh, they want to find a minimum area. They say that uh, we want to create a rectangular page. Okay, so uh, I want to rectangular page. I want 36 uh, inches squared for the um, print is what they say. The margins on each side are an inch and a half. Okay, so the print is actually the 36 and then this is uh, 1.5 uh, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5 uh, for each of those, and um, uh, find the dimensions of the page such that the least amount of paper is used. Okay, so minimize uh, paper. All right, well. We need, uh, probably ought to start naming some things. So um, on this paper, I have uh, probably, you know, I'm going after these dimensions, X and Y. And so the minimum area of the paper, I guess, would be, uh, so area. Uh, the minimum area of that paper would be, be that I want to minimize, say, z equal x times y. Okay, and then just the question is, okay, what's all this other stuff as far as constraints? Well, the margins come into play because I know something about this area. And so um, instead of x being the width in here, it's actually x minus 3. So so the print is uh, x minus 3 by y minus 3. Okay, that's the print. And we're told that area is 36. Okay, so we are trying to minimize z equal x times y subject to uh, well, you know, we, we do have um, some things, I guess, you know, we, we know that the x and the y need to be greater than or equal to zero and so forth, but we also know the print, so we have x minus y times y, uh, sorry, x minus 3 times y minus 3, that needs to be 36. And, um, uh, let's see what else we know, right? We do know uh, the x and the y need to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, they, they're also bounded above by, um, uh, well, they, uh, well, actually, uh, x and y uh, are even better than greater than or equal to zero. They're each bigger than or equal to three. So. Um, because of the margins. Okay, so I have the print in there. So they're at least three each. And then um, upper bounds, I, I don't know, right off the top of my head. So uh, so let's see if this is enough to, to get us going. Um, you know, I want to minimize this x times y. Uh, wow. Unfortunately, you know, I would love to multiply this thing out and get an x times y and just substitute that way. But, unfortunately, that would still leave a x and a y both in the rest because I'll get a minus 3y and a minus 3x. And, and so I think what I have to do is solve for y. Uh, y minus 3 is 36 over x minus 3. And so y is equal to 36 uh, over x minus 3 plus 3. So we get that, and 
I don't know if it's worth a common denominator here or not. It probably is. Uh, so I'm going to get a common denominator. This is 36 uh, plus uh, 3x minus 9 all over x minus 3, which is 20. Well, I'll write it as 3x plus 27 over x minus 3. Okay, now I need to put that all back into the minimization problems. So I want to minimize z, which was x times y, so that's x times uh, 3x plus 27 over x minus 3. And that is uh, 3x squared plus, whoops, I was talking there, so hopefully uh, I'm not, I think it just went out. I'm sorry if it went out a little longer ago than that. Um, so uh, anyway, I was just kind of going through finding that um, denominator, common denominator uh, reference, and then putting in my x times y. So hopefully you could have done that blindfolded, um, which you were. Uh, so 27x over x minus 3. Now we need our critical numbers, so we want z prime. Uh, take the derivative of that, set it equal to 0. So the derivative here, not too bad. Uh, you know, I can put this into Sage to check it, um, but uh, it is just a quotient rule, derivative of the top, so I'll get 6x plus 27. Uh, times x minus 3, the thing on the bottom, and then minus uh, the thing on the top, 3x squared plus 27x, uh, times the derivative of x minus 3, which is 1, all over x minus 3 squared. And we want to set that equal to 0. So the denominator doesn't matter in setting it equal to 0. Uh, but it definitely will matter as far as a second derivative. Yeah. So, you know, that starts looking really ugly. But um, let's just uh, take care of this first. I can, I can multiply this thing out. This is 6x squ squared um, a plus 27 and a minus 18 is a plus 9x and then minus 51. And that's minus 3x squared minus 27 x all over x minus 3 squared. Okay, so this is 3x squared uh, minus 18x minus 51 uh, all over x minus 3 squared. And um, I can factor a 3 out, so this is 3 times uh, x squared minus 6x uh, minus 17 all over x minus 3 quantity squared. Now, let's see. Um, if I did all my calculations correctly, I'm not going to be able to factor this thing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it, it does have roots. I, I can set this thing equal to 0 and get an answer. Um, and so if we set this equal to 0, what we need is uh, x squared minus 6x minus 17 is equal to 0. And so I'll use a quadratic formula. Uh, in this case, I can again, I can check with Sage and Desmos and so forth. Uh, but I get a, a 6 uh, plus or minus the square root of 36. Um, uh, minus 4ac, so 4 times, so this is plus uh, 68, and all over 2. And so this is uh, 3 plus or minus uh, the square root of 90, 104 uh, over 2. Well, 104 is... Um, 26 uh, times 4, so this is plus or minus the square root of 26, I believe. 
Now, so can't be minus, um, and so it must just be plus. So x, we get x uh, is 3 plus the square root of 26. Okay, so that's x, and of course y, well, we solve that, uh, where that, boy, that was way back here. Um, you know, so y, we would uh, put that in there. y is uh, 36 over x minus 3. So y is equal to 36 over x minus 3. And then it was, what, plus something? Uh, plus 3. Yes, plus 3. Now, what's sort of nice about this is um, when I put x in there, I just get the square root of 26 on the bottom. And so this is um, 36 over the square root of 26 and then plus 3. Okay, so that appears to be the answer. Now, I haven't checked relative max or min. Um, you know, again, this is one of those things that, you know, I, that's the only uh, answer it could be unless it happens at a boundary point. Um, but uh, remember, we're trying to minimize the amount of paper. And, um, you know, if X is 3, mm, not good. You know, so that would be bad. And... Um, and similarly, though, if y is 3, that would be bad, okay? And, and those are sort of the boundaries on this. So I believe, um, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, this is probably going to be the answer. Now, I can take the second derivative of this x and y. Well, that I think I'll leave to Desmos. Um, and so, you know, let's take a look at, uh, well, z double prime of x and, and make sure that that is indeed positive. So is it the case that c, z double prime plus, uh, or 3 plus uh, square root of 26, is that greater than 0? So we can go check our work here uh, with Desmos on all of this. Uh, I'm going to scroll back here so I've got my function, my original function that I'm dealing with there. Uh, and let's go to Desmos. So here's Desmos. My original function is uh, x times uh, 3x plus 27. And that's divided by x minus 3. Okay. And so I'm looking here at this point, and I see 9. Okay. And what did I say? I said, I'll have to go back here and look. And I said 3 plus the square root of 26. Now that's interesting. Um, okay, so let's do f prime of x, and that's at 9, so it pays to check. So, um, and what is the number 3 times uh, the square root of 30, or 3 plus the square root? Of, that's almost 9, so 3 plus uh, the square root of of 26 yeah it's 8.1 ish okay so I messed up a calculation it appears and you know um, and this is to show why I well let's get rid of that um, why I check my work um, you know these derivatives uh, they can did I um, let me go back and look you know, sort of from the beginning. Um, let's see. So, let me switch here and just make sure I, you know, um, 
Well, it appears, best I can tell, yeah, I made a bad calculation somewhere, so I want to go find it. Um, okay, let's go back here. All right, so I look here, and uh, I, the x minus 3, y minus 3, now that wouldn't change our answer on Desmos. Um, so I have the x minus 3, y minus 3 equals 36. Uh, you know, and uh, so I, I get down to here, and actually I, I'm going to have to trust this because this is what I put into. Uh, oh, wait. Let's see what we have here. Y. What did I put into Desmos? Let me make sure here. Did I put in... Um, 3x squared and 27x, just to look. Uh, oh, I did the x times uh, 3x plus 27 over x minus 3. Okay, yeah. So I have the right thing in Desmos. And so now it's a matter of my uh, derivatives. So 3x squared and 27x. So the derivative of the top uh, 6x and 27. Uh, the thing on the bottom is x minus 3 minus the thing on the top, 3x squared plus 27x. And, um, oh, let's see. Oh, no, okay. Uh, thought I had it there for a second. And then over x minus 3 quantity squared. Now, the x minus 3 quantity squared shouldn't matter um, on all this. So, when I multiply, I get a x times a 6x, that's 6x squared. I get a 27x, okay, let's put that over here, 27x. And I get a uh, minus 18x, and I'm pretty sure that's 9x. And then three, ah, three times 27. That's where you were all were yelling at me, right? What's three times 27? That's not 51, that's 81. There we go. And uh, um, so this is a minus 81. I can still take a three out. Uh, three into 81 is 27. And so now I need to solve that uh, quadratic equation. Uh, but that darn thing factors, right? This is uh, x minus 9 times x plus 3 equals 0. And so we get um, uh, x equals 9, okay? So I'm not too good with numbers. Um, but there is the x equals 9 we should have gotten. So let's go back to Desmos. And now that I've uh, figured that out, okay, that should have been 9. That's a 9. Um, and uh, then I need f double prime of 9. And, uh, you know, looking at the picture, I should see that that's concave up, and we do get 1. And so if I go back here, um, uh, forget all that stuff, uh, I can simply say down here that um, z double prime of 9 is equal to 1, which is greater than 0. And I got that through Desmos. And, um, and so, uh, let's see. Um, so that means concave up. And so we do indeed have a relative minimum. And so everything now, Desmos and the calculations, all point to um, that we want x to be 9 and y uh, to be uh, 36 over 6 plus 3 
and 9. That's what I might have guessed. Uh, 36 over 9 minus 3 plus 3, but that's just 9. I might have guessed, right, that it would be a square, and, uh, and so we get that um, x times y is equal to 81, and so that's our total area. And, um, and then our, um, remember the margins, right? We took away 3 from each side and we got the 36 uh, that way because 6 times 6 would be 36. So we want a square piece of paper that is 9 by 9. All right, so, you know, I always hate to uh, make um, arithmetic errors or algebra errors, but I do, you know, and, and again, as I'm trying to talk to somebody else, basically, as I do it, sure, you know, I'm a little more likely to make mistakes, but the point is, I find them, right? So I found it. Now, how did I find, find it? I used all these things that are at my disposal, and I used multiple ways of going after the solution. So I, I do my derivations as best I can, uh, but I am also not afraid to take a look on technology. Um, but as much as I can, I want to kind of see those things happen for myself. Now here I did not uh, go through the SAGE stuff with uh, finding derivatives uh, that way. But yeah, I could have calculated my second derivative on SAGE um, and written that down. Okay, so that is uh, exercise 18.